Hello and Happy New Year. How are you? I hope you're doing well and welcome to the 10 year anniversary of Pan That Palette. Ugh, I know that was cheesy. I realized that was so cheesy, but I feel like it's kind of appropriate because holy moly, it's been 10 years of this project. So I can't thank you enough if you've been panning palettes along with me for, for all this time. I wish you all the success and encouragement and I just, I can't believe we're sitting here. It is, it is full circle <laughs> for a full circle moment. So um, today is all about <sighs> the finale for the Novel Cosmetics Side-by-Side -side Nude Palette. Man, oh man, have I learned a lot. And so in fact, because I'm gonna be real honest with you, this palette has taken me several years to get through. And in fact, today, hmm, as we go into the finale, I'm gonna have a roll of pictures throughout my progress at the end of this video, so feel free to check that out. I'm also gonna have pictures of the looks that I created um, as I went through this palette, but here is the final status update for what is going on. Everything is finished except that tiny little sliver of Untitled in the bottom, but can you believe, I mean, for as long as it took to get through this, that's a pan of matte black. I'm feeling really, really proud of myself. So um, today is the last day that you're gonna see this palette from me. So we're gonna bid adieu to this and it's gonna go straight in the bin <laughs> when we're done with this video. So like I said, I actually had to go through um, my old videos and, and make some notes. So I have everything here um, if I look down and, and kind of uh, think through. I, I wanted to have a really comprehensive overview on how I felt about painting this palette because I actually started painting it back in 2021. Um, at that time for painting that palette, I wanted to basically have more of a pan those eyeshadows kind of theme. And so I put a goal in front of myself back then to um, basically pick palettes for my collection. And my goal was to hit pan and three shadows and then I'd move on. And I successfully did that, ended up really, really enjoying the formula. So at the start, of 2022, I realized, okay, so like I said, I'm going to be looking at my notes for a little bit, but um, I got into a routine. I wanted consistency. I was panning multiple palettes that had very similar shades at that time. So we had Novel Cosmetics. We had the Lorac Pro Soleil palette, which I don't actually have the physical palette to show you because I've depotted those shades into a really large Adept Cosmetics palette with other Lorac shades and like color pops. So I don't physically have it to show you. It's it's really cumbersome um, to bring onto camera, but um, I was just I was in a moment of really kind of feeling the need to kind of jump around my collection because I wanted it to be fun and exciting. Um, as I filmed on here, because I just at the time I was feeling really bored. Um, we'd had staying at home, staying safe, that whole situation going on then. So makeup wearing was really a roller coaster for me. I know it was. For many many other people and so I just needed something to ground me and give me consistency but I will say the reason that I came around to wanting to pan the novel cosmetics palette in 2022 consistently was because I noticed a really big uptick in my makeup spending at that time um, I loved that I was jumping around my collection and using things because I thought oh this is awesome I'm making progress woohoo I can go out and buy some makeup but the reality of it was I, I wasn't purchasing things that really added any substantial value to my collection and I was using my bouncing around as justification for buying those new products and basically when I took a step back at, you know, and looked at my behavior and thought through what I was thinking and feeling and acting on at that time, I realized that I needed to get myself back into this project because over the course of, you know, at that point, nine years um, of this project, I realized that when I'm laser focused on painting a palette, it is realistically like putting on some blinders in a way um, over time. I mean, it was hard in the beginning, but now it's, it's like me putting on my blinders where it's easy for me to ignore what's going on around me in the makeup sphere um, with new products and whatnot, because I'm realistically 
looking at those new items thinking it's going to be a long time before I physically get to use that item because I'm putting my attention over here. So I'm consistent. I'm not acting on impulse because I've got the motivation of filming my updates. That was another thing that was really kind of off the wall. Um, I know that those of you that have followed me for years, my filming has been kind of erratic just because with life going through its ups and downs, we're trying to get back into normal routines and, and we've all been through it. It's it just, I didn't really find a rhythm um, until 2023. So I wanted, well, and I guess the other thing that I wanted to touch on is the reason I started it back in 2022 is because I had a really, really, really strong start to the novel palette. At that time, I was using a look that panned nine of the shades. I mean, crazy town, because there are four, eight, 12, 16, 16 shades in that palette. So in order to be able to use nine shades out of here, I was feeling really, really over the top motivated and I just decided, okay, let's jump back into the project, let's do this. Let's go on and finish it. And so I basically wanted to physically move out the packaging. Um, I wanted to get back to basics because the Pan That Palette project is what really has consistently built my following on this channel. And I appreciate every, every, every single one of you um, that has been on this path of figuring things out all these years, no matter if it's been the Naked Palette through Lorac, through Too Faced, through MAC, you know, everything, Stila, it's been a long, long journey of learning things. And so I wanted to have that camaraderie again. I wanted to have that motivation. I wanted to have the success of finishing something because it felt just, it felt strange to not be able to move out packaging and eyeshadow for my collection for several years. And so I was just like, it's time. I, I need to get myself back into it. So that takes us into the lessons learned, you know, through the accountability, through everything. So lesson one, and I, like I said, I want to refer to my notes on some of these. So lesson one that I learned. Okay. This palette is currently available to buy on the market. So you can run to your local Ulta, you can run to Sephora and whatnot and be able to pick this up. Now, who would I recommend this palette for? I wouldn't say it's necessarily a beginner palette. I would say it's for somebody experienced with shadow application because in particular, the formula was kind of scattered all over the place from the shimmers to the mattes. If you notice, like some of the pans have a waffle texture in them, which surprised me when I first started painting the palette because even like the shades like Love Ritual down here was a shimmer shadow but it didn't have a waffle pattern. The ones that did have a waffle were really kind of tough to use. Um, some of them were chunky, some of them didn't show up necessarily, some of them were, you know, I had to play around with applying them, whether it was a brush, whether it was a sponge tip applicator, whether it was with my finger, whether it was using a setting spray, or something like MAC Fix Plus. I mean, it really took experience and understanding eyeshadow application and understanding using other products in tandem to make this work. Because if a beginner just picked up this palette and started using it, if they had trouble putting on some of the eyeshadows, it might make them just completely give up and be like, I don't, I either don't understand this or this is just a horrible formula. So, let's say like intermediate <laughs> an intermediate eyeshadow enthusiast, because like I said, it did take some work. Um, I also noticed that the mattes, okay. If you want a similar formula to kind of compare it to the Nabla formula was very similar to the Lorac pro formula. So I'm very comfortable with that. So I, I guess in terms of it's, more powdery than MAC, but denser than Juvia's Place, to give you kind of a point of reference now, because Lorac is not necessarily a forefront of the brand discussion anymore in terms of eyeshadows. So if you don't have Lorac palettes in your collection, if you have something like MAC, it's like really densely packed, 
really hard to pan those shades versus like Juvia's Place, which are actually very easy to pan um, because the, the shadows are a little bit more powdery, the pants are shallower, a little more consistent. So I wanted to give you a little bit of a frame of reference. Um, there was great payoff with some of the shadows, but the ones that didn't have great payoff, I had a little bit of a learning curve. And what I ended up doing was I would layer those with other shadows. So we'll talk about that in a further lesson. Lesson number two that I took away from this palette is this is a staple, a staple workhorse palette. The looks made me feel pretty, but they were nothing to get excited about. They were nothing to write home about. They were not Instagram worthy. But every time I applied my makeup, I just felt like I was putting my best foot forward. I received lots of compliments on the makeup, but it was, it was not exciting to put on this makeup. So I know for a lot of people that, that want that feeling of, wow, look what I did, or, or they need to change things up, this may not be the palette um, for them. But if you're wanting just consistency and having a beautiful palette to make a work look or something easy that you can just go to that you know is gonna be practical with most of your wardrobe, this is a good go-to. Like I said, as long as you have some experience with eyeshadow, this is a really, really good go-to. I felt comfortable with all the looks that I wore from going to the grocery store to pick up things, to going to work, to going out to dinner. Like I said, the bottom line is I just, I felt pretty, but yeah, certainly it was nothing to get excited about of, wow, what are you wearing? I mean, it was, I felt like more of the emphasis was, wow, your eyes look really pretty or wow, you know, it, it was like the makeup faded into the backdrop versus being the focus of the look or the focus of the attention that people put on you. So I don't know, it was just, it was kind of a weird, a weird feeling because I mean, it's nice to have that, but at the same time, when you're into makeup like we are, it's like you want that zing, you want the excitement and you want the, the wow factor. And it just, it's, it's a very different, <laughs> it's a different experience um, from that. So I wanted to share that with you because I do, I do think that Nabla did a fantastic job of creating a color scheme that works well on multiple skin tones. And I really feel like this palette in particular caters quite well to folks with brown eyes and green eyes specifically. Um, the blue eyes, definitely, I think there could be some playing around with a little bit more, um, especially as you get into the gray shadows because I mean, in my experience, it took me a little bit longer um, with those, but definitely with those warmer browns and things like that, it really just enhances your eye color and it's absolutely beautiful. So it's, it's definitely worth a try, but like I said, you just feel pretty. You feel pretty, but it's not wow factor, Instagram worthy. All right, then um, that turns us into lesson number three. And lesson number three is the formula. Like I said, the formula wasn't consistent from shimmer to shimmer and from matte to matte because, um, okay, just to kind of give you a, a little bit of a, a moment here. I ended up mixing Burnt Sienna and Tempura, which were the two um, reddish browns that were in this palette because I didn't get the payoff that I wanted on its own of Burnt Sienna, but Tempura was too dark. So when I mixed the two together, then I got that happy Goldilocks shade of in between to run through my crease. Um, brow shadows. I ended up mixing these two shades that were here, which was like a cool tone brown for Beauty Mark and a, um, I wouldn't say it was a warm tone, but like a neutral tone brown, dark espresso brown with the shade Clan. Clan was a little bit more versatile for me because I ended up using it as an outer corner shade when I would wear a smoky look, kind of like I've got this dark charcoal shade going on right now. Um, but really like Beauty Mark couldn't stand up on its own um, on my skin tone. I needed to mix it. So it ended up taking me a very, very long time to pan because using it in my eyebrows, obviously, um, it was not going to go anywhere fast. Um, and then with the clan shade, using it in my outer corner, I don't have to use very much shadow. So those ended up taking me so long, <laughs> so long um, to pan. And then these were a little bit quicker because I was mixing them and then applying them in my crease. And, you know, that was fine. But shades like Untitled, I mean, literally, I've been wearing this for a liner since 2021. I mean, it's 
holy cow. <laughs> it's been a long time. Um, but like I said, from shimmer to shimmer, things weren't consistent. Like I went through up here with the, um, what was it, Paradiso, which was a really, really warm gold shade. It worked really nicely on my lid. Um, but I would say like it was, it was kind of a chunky mess. It stained my makeup brush no matter how many times I washed it. So that was a thing I had to get over. Um, but then I would go over here to the shades like Magic Moment and Body and Soul. Those were shades that I ended up using as highlighter shades just because they were kind of too chunky to wear on my lid or they wouldn't show up where I had to use them as topper shades. And then there's the crepiness factor and it was just, it was a whole thing. So, like I said, I will say that the formula, I was, I was a little surprised to see that everything wasn't consistent across the board. Um, another shade that kind of surprised me down here was Rarity. This was what I ended up wearing as my highlighter shade for literally most of 2022. And I, if I'm not mistaken, I think I used it in the beginning of 2023 as a highlighter shade. I don't recall... I don't, you'll notice when I put up the, the photos in the slideshow at the end, but this was one that it wasn't a matte shade, but it wasn't a full on shimmer and it took forever. So that definitely surprised me. Oh, the other thing that I wanted to let you know, if you have this palette, um, if you hit pan in the shades that have the waffle bottom, you can repress them literally by just pressing them down into the pan. You don't have to use any rubbing alcohol. So when you get to the bottom of those shadows and you want to get to the edges and whatnot, just use a paper towel to kind of cover up your finger and the, the body heat and oil of your finger through the paper towel is enough when you apply pressure to go on and press those shadows back into place. So that was kind of a fun find. Um, I did that several times as I, you know, got to the Bon Roi Paradiso and definitely as I got into the dregs of um, the shades that I was using as highlighters and whatnot. So I wanted to share that tip with you too, because that was something that kind of caught me off guard. Um, but definitely I, I had a learning curve in terms of figuring out, okay, how long is it going to take me? I misjudged how long it would take me a lot of the time because I, I just got so in the moment of I'm making so much progress, layering shades. This is going to be so easy. And then it turned out that it actually took much, much longer than I anticipated. So we'll talk about that in just a little bit. All right, then, um, well, here we go. That takes us into lesson number four. <laughs> and I really had to step back and think about this one as I um, went through and I watched my old videos because I realized that I, I overestimated my panning abilities beyond anything I've ever done before. <laughs> with this palette. I mean, I, I had better anticipation, I guess, with the, with, with the Anastasia Beverly Hills subculture palette, which was like a beast of its own, but then I did with the Nabla palette. So I really wanted to put this out there because I know I was, uh, I was, uh, watching Monica Adriana's video for her pan that palette finale. In fact, I'll go and include it in the description box below because she articulated so well how she was feeling when she got to the end of her Jaclyn Hill palette. And I was like, I know exactly where she is because I've felt all those feelings before. So if you're wanting some additional motivation and again, just that, you know, down to earth practicality that sometimes we need to be reminded it's okay not to finish, go on and check out her video too, because I have to admit it put me on a it put me on a motivation roller coaster, not gonna lie. Um, I definitely had my ebbs and flows because like I said, when I began the project back at the, you know, the beginning of 2022, I was like, gun ho, this is gonna be awesome. I'm gonna finish it, it's gonna be great. I had a good start, I'm using nine shades out of 16. Like, whoa, we're gonna, you know, really pedal to the metal and I'm gonna finish it early. Nope. <laughs> Definitely, definitely not the case. And I will be the first to admit that it really bummed me out um, as we got into the end of 2022. I mean, my accountability was not where it should have been just because life was kind of coming back to normal from what it had been the years previous. But not having the, the motivation of progress from month to month, I was like feeling the drain and I felt like it would be too 
boring and to, um, I don't, I don't know. Like, I don't know. Underwhelming, I guess is the word I'm looking for right now, but I just, I didn't have the consistency I needed. I didn't have the accountability for myself that I needed to have. I mean, I, I knew that I could count on each and every one of you to kick me in the tail and be like, you need to get back to work. <laughs> you know, you need to, you need to get back into the spirit of panning. You need to do this. You need to, you know, and get me motivated. But I just, I needed to, I needed to pull myself out, <laughs> pull myself up by the bootstraps and get back into, into the panning game. But definitely like I, I went through my lull as well. So I wanted to encourage you that it is very real. It happens to every single one of us. And no matter how long we've been panning, it's okay. It's okay to go through that lull because it's a very real aspect of this project. But definitely I, I hit one in 2022 going into 2023 for sure. So, um, I will say while it tested my willpower, it also taught me to give myself a lot of grace um, because as I went back and watched my old updates, I realized how resourceful I became because I, I would finish shadows and I would jump into other palettes and bring those shades in because I was highly motivated to finish shades that I was still working on from Nabla. And so I would go in and make progress in things like my MAC Warm Neutrals palette or my Lorac Pro Soleil palette or the Juvia's Place Nubian 3 Coral or I worked on the ColourPop, the Child palette um, for a time while I was going through. So it really took me back down memory lane to realize you made more progress than you thought you did over the course of this project. Sure, if I hadn't jumped around, maybe I could have finished it in a year, maybe not, who knows. Um, but the reality of it was I spent that time dedicating other shadows into the project too, which isn't a bad thing, you know? So there's that too. Um, so I, I definitely would say also give yourself some grace if you didn't finish the palette as well because as long as you're using it as your staple go-to, it's fine. Jump around your collection, have fun. You know, use your other shadows, bring things in, keep yourself excited, keep yourself motivated. And while I talk about the, the looks like we're pretty and nothing to write home about, sure, I could have made them even more exciting by mixing in greens or mixing in blues or mixing in all sorts of things from the rest of my collection. So it's all a matter of perspective, you know? Okay, but in any case, that goes into lesson number five. And lesson number five, bottom line, this palette is dupable. Oh my word, it is dupable. Um, if you already have a substantial collection, there is zero reason for you to bring this in. Zero. If you're wanting a soft formula and you are, you know, fairly new to makeup, you have some experience, by all means, go out and try this out. But literally every single shade every single shade from this palette is dupable. Seriously. It was, and again, that takes me back to list number four of like jumping around my collection and finding other things. Because like when I finished um, Burt Sienna and Tempura, I brought in a shadow from L'Oreal, like a, one of the singles that was released years ago. And I ended up making huge progress in that shadow. Or when I finished Rarity, I brought in highlighting shades. When I finished the Magic Milk, excuse me, when I finished Magic Moment and Body and Soul, I brought in my MAC Mineralized Skin Finish and Soft and Gentle. I mean, literally, it was just like boom after boom after boom. Everything was dupable, including that gold shade Paradisa right here. So every single thing you can find in your collection, which again, brings me back to that lesson of putting the blinders on and kind of turning off my sensors to new makeup because it brings back that that fact that no matter how exciting a release is, there's always gonna be something else that's exactly like it. They change up the packaging, but there's always more. And it's it's so much easier to not be a magpie <laughs> when it comes to makeup and think, ooh, shiny, ooh, I gotta have that, ooh, I want that, because it, it puts it into perspective once again of like, you probably already have it. That's the reality of it. All right, so then, 
that made me realize that really in 2023, I only purchased one little eyeshadow thing. And that was, I will show you, I picked up the Natasha Denona Mini Triochrome Palette. This was the only eyeshadow I picked up at all in 2023. And really, <laughs> even when I got it home. So the reason I bought this palette was for this shade right here this shade right here, because it's a duochrome. Because it has blue and purple and it's sparkly and pretty and this, that, and the other. Did I need this? No. <laughs> but I bought it anyway and I'm, you know, I'm, I'm happy that it's the only thing that I bought, but um, again, at least compared to all these warm tone shadows, like it was at least something a little bit different to add to my collection because I looked at the triochrome palette and I was like, well, it doesn't have blues. <laughs> so, yeah. I went on and, and bought the palette, but yeah, I, I mean, I'm, I'm happy that I didn't buy a whole lot, but at the same time, I was like, did I need this? No, absolutely not, but here we are. Just wanted, just wanted to share that with you, because that was, <laughs> that was a thing, that was a moment, um, but still, it was <sighs> just once again, to look at my back of stash and realize, like, it's going to be so unrealistic to expect to be able to finish all of this eyeshadow in a lifetime. I've really, really honed in. And I don't have a huge collection, but even though I don't have a huge collection, it is still like, it's overwhelming to think of how long it's going to take me to get through this. So again, back to the practicality of like, you don't have enough eyeballs to wear all this stuff. <laughs> So we got to focus. We got to focus. Um, so that gets us into lesson number six. Bottom line, um, I had two themes of looks that came out of this palette. Back to the non is exciting because look number one for 2022 was a smoky warm brown. Had some reddish tones in it. I would change up the lid shades because I started with a gold, then I went to a rose gold, then I went to kind of an amaretto shade. You remember the Too Faced Chocolate Bar palette, that shade amaretto, kind of similar, like a burgundy brown kind of thing. Super pretty, easy, but everything realistically kind of looked the same, not gonna lie. Um, so that's why I say, again, the look was really, really pretty, but I mean, when, when the only thing that you're changing is your lid shade, it's really hard to make the looks look different. Then in 2023, the theme for that has been this smoky gray eye. I've literally been wearing this the majority of the year. I do have a couple of months here and there where I would split off and do other things and then just use the untitled um, shade from here as my liner, or I would go through and use the Love Ritual while I had that shade, but really it has been about painting the Cubism shade, so smoky gray, Armadillo eyes is what I call it, um, has been the theme for 2023. So, um, I understand that that is a great thing for somebody wanting to capsule pan, but again, for the eyeshadow enthusiast that wants to change things up, that is something to keep in mind if you're wanting to incorporate this palette into your collection, because if you're only realistically achieving two looks out of that palette, it's going to be pretty easy to get bored. I mean, frustratingly bored. So um, definitely I wanted to put that out there, um, especially knowing that it took me so long um, to get through some of the shades in the palette, like wearing Rarity as my highlighting shade. It took me literally almost all of 2022. Um, untitled, I mean, still panning it today. Um, and then, you know, the, the crease shades and whatnot. I mean, it was just like over and over and over and over and over again, the same look without, you know, with only changing the lid shades basically, which takes us into lesson number seven. On that note of the gray theme, the shade that taught me the most from the novel palette was the shade Cubism. And the reason I say that is because I avoided that shade for so long. I mean, I, I always kind of had it in the background of my mind that I would pan it around Christmas, it'd be fine, but I kept wearing warm looks over and over and over and over and over again as I brought in Lorac Pro Soleil, as I brought in MAC Warm Neutrals, because I just, I, 
I'll be honest, I dreaded wearing gray eyeshadow. What made me finally come around to it was knowing not only did I want to finish the palette, but also my hair had begun changing. Because as you can see, I'm starting to embrace the silver and white strands that are coming into my hair, and that really made me take a step back when it comes to my makeup and take a good hard look about what I wanted to do. So cubism really, really, really pushed me out of my comfort zone once I finished. It was a beautiful pewter shade in here called Love Ritual. It kind of looked like a silver in the pan, but when I put it on my eyes, it really translated more of a pewter, especially if I would anchor it down with browns and whatnot. And once I finished that shade, I was a little bit stuck until I realized I loved a dove gray on the eyes. But what I really noticed was I needed to be inspired to use it. And I found that inspiration through the Juvia's Place Nubian 3 Coral Palette because this palette focuses on using corals and grays together. So this is where we are and in fact, this is going to be my Pan That Palette for 2024. So as you can see, this is my starting point for here. Get a good gander. And this shade right here is actually a direct dupe for Cubism, if you're wanting a comparison. So as we're talking about that, um, referring back to my notes right here, I found that I needed to embrace not just my hair, but I needed to embrace learning how to wear cool tones. And a lot of what's been helpful is pairing it with peach, with orange, with corals, with reds. Like today, I'm wearing a combination of Max Chicory. No, I think I'm wearing Max Burgundy lip liner along with the um, lip color in Devoted to Chili. And then I've got coral accents going all through. Like I'm using actually one of the Juvia's Place eyeshadows as blush. I've got coral shades kind of running through my crease just to anchor down the gray because what I have noticed through learning how to wear gray eyeshadow is it really makes the brown in my eyes pop along with anchoring down the gray and the silver that's coming into my hair on the tops and the sides. But as a little sidebar note, I got to finally achieve one of the other goals that I've had for myself. And as silly as this is going to sound, it's wearing a pair of black glasses. Um, I've never found a pair that I've really, really loved because even if I found a shape that was flattering for me, just having black frames against my face looked so harsh and so out of place that I was hesitant to wear them. And as I brought in the gray shadows, I'm like, I need to kind of change things up because it's not working with my warmer tone glasses and it didn't work at all when I try to wear clear frames. And if I tried to wear colorful frames, it was just too much. It was very distracting. And so finally, I, I found these black frames on z -Lul, and it made me fall in love not only with this look, but like I said, I finally got to achieve another goal of wearing black frames. So sidebar, that was another avenue that opened up for my wardrobe and just to get me excited and motivated to wear makeup because now in order to make my eyes stand out under my glasses, now I've got a gray eyeshadow look that I, I learned to love, appreciate, and adore. Um, and then now I'm painting the exact same look as I'm going into Juvia's place. So there you go. There you go. It's all about learning, appreciating, and accepting. <laughs> you know what I mean? So then that gets to, um, it basically gets us to the last lesson. And that is, you never stop learning. I learn from every, 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 every single palette that I've ever panned. And now that we're into the double digits of palettes finished, what? <laughs> the double digits of palettes finished and now 10 years into this project going on year 10 right now. So a welcome, welcome, welcome to the project pay a trade with pan that palette. But, um, I'm proud to say that I'm still learning. I mean, it, it never stops. And I'm, I look forward to continuing to learn more and more about myself as I'm moving through more out of my collection. 
we grow, we change, we, we evolve with our preferences. And so now is the time that I'm going to bid adieu to this packaging. And after we film this video, it goes in the bin. It goes in the bin. So it's been, it's been a, it's been a worthwhile ride. It's been a trying ride, but in a good way. I've learned a lot about myself and Again, it makes me excited and motivated to look forward to what's ahead, no matter how long it takes. So from now on, if it does take me more than a year to finish a palette, I'm okay. I'm okay. In fact, you know, looking back on things, when I started Pan That Palette back in 2014 with the um, Urban Decay Naked Palette, I didn't start off with a brand new palette then either um, because I'd actually had wells in half-baked and I had wells and a couple other things. I hadn't hit pan in anything, but at that point in my life, I was really struggling to learn how to wear gold eyeshadow. But I remember specifically, I don't, maybe I'd hit pan and virgin. I don't remember. I'd have to go back and look, but I do remember that I'd been using the palette for a while and I just got this wild hair idea one day to be like, let's put it out on the internet to pan a palette and see if, if it can be done. Because at that time, people weren't finishing palettes on YouTube. I mean, I'm sure people did in their everyday life, but um, in terms of, of where we were in the beauty community back then, that was such a, a new concept and man, how it has grown since then. I, I, I'm never not amazed at the impact that this project has been able to have on People loving their makeup, discovering their makeup, and really learning about themselves and finding new favorites in their collection that maybe they didn't have. Or maybe it, you know, is helping them to finally put a dent that they needed in their collection. I know that's where I started from, that I needed to have impact in my collection to stop my spending because that's where I was at that time. My motivation is very different now than it was back then, but... Um, I just, I hope that this continues to offer you encouragement and that if you've never done a pan that palette before, jump on in because it is worth every single feeling from absolute joy to absolute frustration. Um, everything in between, it is all part of the learning process. So that takes us into where we are for 2024. And like I said, we are going to be panning the Juvia's Place. Nubian three coral palette. I am going to be back to consistently updating the middle of each month because that's what I did for years and years in the beginning. So look forward to those videos um, at the middle of each month and it'll kind of be a nice little break, um, a breather because I know a lot of people will update at the beginning of the month or the end of the month. So this way I hope that this continues to offer you motivation because you'll be able to find Pan That Palette updates from all of us in the panning community no matter what time of the month it is. So Oh, that didn't sound right. <laughs> uh, but you know what I mean. You know what I mean. There, there will always be fresh motivation. So like I said, here's where we're starting with this palette. And on that note, I'm going to continue updating you with my progress on the Better Together Pan That Palette as well as the Kickin' It Old School Pan That Palette. So I hope you continue to look forward to those updates. And I am also toying with pairing in the two um, palettes that I'm thinking about incorporating are going to be the Tartlet Tarte Palette. I'm starting out practically brand new with this one. I'm kind of on the fence on whether I want to stick with it consistently right now because the smell on it is pretty intense for me with that vanilla smell. But this is what this looks like in case you're wanting reference. So I thought about it because as I'm looking in this, I can use shades from here for my brows, for highlighting. Um, I've got this shade on. I ended up having to mix it with my MAC Soft Brown just because it didn't have the payoff I wanted to, but I wore this in my crease. But I was thinking of some of these shades for like highlighting and whatnot. So let's see what kind of progress I can make on this since I'm not starting with a fresh palette um, with Nabla. I'm also thinking about when I finish the gray shadow from the Juvia's Place palette, I'm thinking about incorporating the um, BH Cosmetics Blueberry palette right here, and then incorporating the grays and all that. 
But otherwise, that about wraps it up. I'm just about out of battery. So um, I look forward to the slideshow at the end of this video with my progress and looks. Thank you for watching, and I look forward to seeing you in a couple weeks with the next Pan That Palette update. Adios.